I'm Venus with Galaxy Inc. And for this week's writing tips, we're going to be doing an introduction to poetry. And as you can see, I have a guest because I am not a poet. <laughs> so I need somebody to help me a little bit with this. Uh, and so I've invited Diane Gracie to join me. She is a published author and she, or poet, poet I should poet, say. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, she's gonna help me a little bit. We're gonna define some terms. We're gonna talk about poetry. We're also going to do a second video uh, that'll post next week. So you'll be able to get a little introduction to poetry and then we're gonna talk about the writing of poetry. And uh, so stay tuned for that one next week. Uh, but first we're gonna just start with um, what is poetry, I think. Uh, and maybe our personal experiences a little bit with poetry. Yeah. And I'm gonna go first because I'm not the poet. <laughs> but I was gonna say, so I don't hate poetry, but poetry's always been this kind of scary thing that I think, and we'll talk more about this next week too, but it kind of was the joy of it was sucked away and so all that was left behind was like the goofy poetry by like Jack Perlutsky and Shel Silverstein and so I was like you know yeah the good poetry that's really goofy and doesn't make any sense and I never felt like I could write it really well and I've always really struggled with writing short things so that's always been really difficult for me and and so I've always had this kind of resistance to poetry not because I think poetry is bad, but because I have a hard time writing it and understanding it sometimes. Um, Meanwhile, Venus was throwing out names and book titles of people <laughs> I didn't even know. So she knows more than she says. Yeah. So what got you into writing poetry? Ooh. Um, it was an easy way for me to write out everything starting from when I was about seven years old. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it just came out of me in lines that just stopped. So I wasn't, I, I, I never to write a poem. Yeah, it just, and I never did journals. I never did journaling. Um, it, it just, it came out of me in a poetic way. And that's how it started and that's how it continues. Although I've expanded a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit. My first love is poetry. So what is a poetry, to, what is poetry to you? Um, I think you have a personal manifesto kind of, or a, um, a personal ode, I think you're calling it. <laughs> uh, so it's, so for me, poetry is my way of getting my point of view across, the way I see the world, the way I think the world sees me. It's very personal to me. Um, it is most often freeform. Um, and, and what I want more than anything is for people to read it and think of something from their point of view or something that happened to their friend and not just go, oh, that's her. Um, I want it to be interactive. I, I, I really feel that that's how you connect with a reader is bringing them in, not only with your words or the way you d decorate something, it's, it's that they understand it. From a from an inside, so we joked about this. We you know we were talking earlier. Of course, we're like planning the video, but we were talking earlier about what is a poem, and you said there's no such thing. <laughs> there's no such thing as what is a poem, but but everybody seems to have an opinion about what a poem is or isn't. Um, so what is a poem? And you said there's a blurring of lines. I think nowadays, you know, 50, 60 years ago, I think if people said sonnet, pantoum, haiku, everybody would understand that's a form of poetry and that's the poetry. Now, it could be one line, but then again, a book could be one line. Mm. There are chapters in a book, you know, from The Rape of the Ape, and I can't think of who wrote that, but there's, the F word is the chapter, and then there's like 20 pages of notes. That's the chapter. Mm -hmm. So you're blurring the lines of of the way we read a book, the way we read poetry. Does it have to rhyme? No. Mm -hmm. I have one rhyming poem that I think I wrote when I was eight about spiders. Um, it, it, but other people would only write in rhyme. Mm -hmm. Country songs probably should rhyme. Are they poems? Loosely, yes, but I think once you put enough refrains in there, you would call it a song. Mm -hmm. 
it's not that it's not poetic, but I, I, I think repeating a line is different than repeating stanzas. That's true. So, that's, so true. that's how I would start, if I had to define poetry in free form, that's where I would start defining it is, um, let's let's put you in that category more than this category. Yeah. Now the poems that have always spoken to me have been narrative poems because I like poems that tell a story. Uh, so we were talking a little bit about this with Sharon Creech mm -hmm. uh, and her, which book is it? Love That Dog. Love That Dog, which somewhere, we think, is somewhere on this bookshelf, but I can't find it's it. It's on my bookshelf. I, I can find Granny and Tortilla Make Soup, but I couldn't find her other one. It's somewhere here. Um, or it might still be in a box, I don't know. <laughs> you know? But um, and that one, you know, it's kind of blurring the lines because it is a story, but it's mostly poems. It's and it's poems that tell a story, but you could take one poem out and read it and it be its own thing. Um, just like uh, Shakespeare Bats Clean Up by Ron Kirchie is a entire book about a kid learning about baseball and, and also learning about poetry. Each poem is a different type of poem, so it's almost teaching young readers what poetry is. So there's like a pantoon in there and then there is a sonnet and then there's a haiku. And it's supposed to be the character uh, who is learning about poems, so he's writing in these different forms to learn for himself, which also allows the reader to learn about different types of poetry. So it's a really fascinating way and blend of storytelling mixed with poems, teaching. that's mixed with teaching, <laughs> uh, you know. So you're right, it is blurring the lines a lot. Um, yeah. You know, it, I, do, I do think that for me, even if it's a narrative poem that's in a book, it sh you should be able to take out a poem and read it by itself and get something from it. Uh, and it, and then that would make it a poem and not just a story told in stanzas, if that makes sense. Yeah. But, <laughs> but aren't we, you know, we were also discussing um, prose poetry, which is almost what you just yes. said poetry isn't. I have difficulty sometimes reading prose poetry and going, is that a poem? Or is that flash fiction or a very short memoir? Um, um, yeah. I, I, I think free form, free verse opened up a lot of questions. And I don't think we should worry about the what if. I think when you start trying to publish your poems, you will find that there are people who are going to tell you, yeah, that's not a poem. Doesn't mean it's not, it means their definition for, for their online journal or right. their print journal or whatever It doesn't magazine. match them. Right. Yeah. It doesn't mean yours isn't. It means you have to do a lot more work to find, I call it your peeps. The people who resonate with you should resonate for you, for your work. And it's a long struggle to get your poems published nowadays. So that kind of leads me into what isn't poetry, because talking about children's books, uh, a lot of picture books, um, some can be considered poetry. They rhyme, uh, or they're free form, but they're only 500 words typically, or less. Uh, so what do, would we consider those poems? Um, could, if we if if we remove the the pictures, which of course, destroys what it is, which is a picture book, um, would it stand on its own as a poem? Some do. Then it, then it could be a lyrical book, or it could be a poetic book, or it could mm -hmm. be a poem book. Yeah. Um, you said you don't think Dr. Seuss, or you don't think of Dr. Seuss as, a, as poems. I don't. No, it's all right. Kill me now. Explain it. <laughs> Um, I think his rhyming is wonderful and it, and it moves you through page to page. I just, I personally don't feel th that is what I would call poetry. Right. It's just, it's a book that rhymes. The words rhyme. Yeah. I, th I think of them as poetry, but they become such a huge part of almost like our lexicon. Like people will say yeah. like, I do not like green eggs and ham and everybody knows the rest of that sentence, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do not like them, <laughs> Sam, I am, you know, and some people, and I, I've actually said those, you know, a word like that or, or said, I do not like them, Sam, I am, you know, I got a brother named Sam. So that kind of plays into there and people will keep on going because they know the story because mm -hmm. it was read to them over and over and they know the rhymes and the rhythm. They don't even need the book or the pictures to 
to to tell it. Um, so in a way, for me, that feels like a story. It feels lyrical too. It almost is like a song. And so then that, yeah. you know, do songs count as poetry? You mentioned country music. It can. Um, it, it absolutely can be. Yeah. But do you want to keep crossing everything over? Do you want to be a poet? and a lyricist of the and I'm saying the same thing so this this one piece mm -hmm. is a poem plus with lyrics so yeah a lot of refrain stuff going on plus we're going to make a picture book out of it I, you know it, it's okay to put it in a bucket yeah I will and so here's the thing that I find really interesting and I didn't mention this when we were talking earlier but I actually ran across this video and I'll, I'll attach it to the bottom here okay but in, it is a guy who wrote Three Little Pigs, okay? He wrote two different versions. One is to be read at bedtime, but one is a trap song. So it is a mm. rap, almost, but it's a trap, uh, of him singing the little pigs as like a kind of a rap version song slash poem, and it's fantastic. And so when I, when I watched that, I thought of poetry. Like, you know, so this guy's almost doing like a, a trap slash spoken word you know like what is this it's a picture book it's everything I love it but you know does it count as a poem it might <laughs> to somebody <Why> maybe you <laughs> but you know I don't know you, you, not everybody likes every kind of music not everybody's gonna like every kind of poem or poetry and there are certain authors there are certain poets that you that they you don't connect with yeah. doesn't mean it's not good, but I, I will agree with Venus that if I have to look things up and I have to, you know, almost write a paper to understand a poem. It takes all the joy out it, of it. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm going to consider something that I would then read their second verse. Or yeah. Read. No. So what about spoken word? Do we consider that poetry? It's, it's lyrical. Very. They, they talk in a different way, almost like a performance-like voice. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of spoken word, by the way. That's one of the poetry types that don't speak to me. Um, I find it, uh, the style of what the way that spoken word is presented kind of grates on me for some reason. I don't know why. It just doesn't like connect with me. It feels, and it also feels very abrasive a lot of times. The spoken word is very kind of in your face, which I think is the point of it, by the way. So it probably, I know it speaks to a lot of other people. Um, it just doesn't, to me, it feels very confrontational uh, style of, of uh, speaking and poetry. Yeah, and I will agree with Venus in a lot of, um, rap spoken word things mm -hmm. like that are may not resonate with me but we were mentioning Viggo Mortensen's yeah his spoken word to me is not confrontational right now whether his voice grates on you I can't help <laughs> you with it's um, but this is a shout out to St. Lawrence <laughs> University high slows uh, try it you know and, and that maybe that's the thing to say is try poetry go online Google poetry journals. Go to the ones that have given you a flavor of some of the things that they've published that are right there. You mm -hmm. don't have to log in and see what what you know what you think. It's, so I think what we're saying is expand your definition of what poetry is. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I think what we're saying is poetry doesn't have really a definition beyond just like it has some kind of form, um, you know, but you should play around with the different types. And if you tell, if you were like me and you told people, I don't like poetry. And what you really meant was, I don't read a lot of William Wordsworth, <laughs> you know, but I do like poetry because I like Shel Silverstein and I like Brawl Doll and I like, you know, I like it. And you all know, I, I read a lot of children's books, so I'm mentioning lots of children's authors, you know, and there's some fantastic books like Out of the Dust by Karen Hess, which is a narrative poetry yeah. form. I, so we're going to be back next week and we're going to talk a little bit more about what actually writing poetry. So this should be interesting. I think that you're going to talk a lot about that. Don't forget to press like and subscribe to my channel. We post new videos on our site every Friday. I've been Venus with Galaxy Inc. I hope your writing is out of this world.